everyone, back again. And with a rat's tail in the drill, we are attacking the hairs. Many, many delicate little hairs. And I will have sharpened this uh, rat's tail a couple of times um, as you go along. As soon as you notice that it is a little bit dull and you're struggling to make a nice sharp, sharp line, then just sharpen it like I have shown you many times before with a stone um, flat on the top so that we can get to more diamonds down the side. Flicking up, flicking up into the dark so that it looks like dark hairs are flicking down and then flicking down as well um, to give the impression of hairs going down and then flicking out to the side. Always flick, flick, flick. You never draw a line when it comes to hair. You're always flicking. Working dry, again, I, I do prefer to work dry. Now that the, the surface of the glass is well and truly broken, and two, you know, we've, we've done so much work on it already. And um, so with a good sharp diamond, nicely, freshly sharpened, um, it will cut really e easily into this engraved area and produce good sharp lines. Uh, you can certainly work with water if you want. Um, I prefer it this way because I find that it... It does show up a little bit better. Um, it produces a good fine roughness. Um, you can see our cat is looking very, very hairy now. Um, there will be many, many more hairs that I do. I do jump around now. I don't show, obviously, the entire um, video of of the engraving because otherwise it would take far too long and there will be an area that I do speed up right I have speeded up the video slightly and put on some smooth jazz This is my little secret fantasy to be wined and dined in a beautiful restaurant with some soft jazz playing in the background. Sigh. <laughs> oh dear, never mind. Okay, um, right, many, many hairs. Not a lot I can say, really. Just sit back and enjoy the music. That was nice. Right, I've turned the glass around as usual to get a better uh, feel, 
uh, from a better angle. You don't want to be awkward with your strokes. It's nice to be able to pull it towards you, these little flicking hairs, because um, they're going to look more efficient and not going to wobble. Uh, if you try to draw them sideways, they can be all over the place. This is a very easy way of doing it. You can see how my thumb actually is supporting the drill. I don't often mention this. Uh, I don't know if you notice it. Um, I don't often even think about it because I've been doing it for <laughs> over 36 years. It's just second nature. Um, and, you know, you you build up your own little quirky um, things that you do the more you engrave. And in the end, you, you really don't think about it. So I've got a white Arkansas here. Blend, 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 sort of, the, this this cat has got lots of dark and light and dark and light, as you have noticed, and so um, the white Arkansas will uh, soften the tone, make the areas a little darker, and then out with a, a little brown rubber just to define some of these areas, and because it's a, a, a very small rubber, it will give the impression of, of little uh, little strokes as well, little sort of hairy effects, although not very fine, obviously, but um, then I'll probably go over again with the diamond. You can go over and over. We are painting with diamonds here, so it's like a little oil painting. Over and over. Until you've got exactly the effect that you want. I must have gone for a tea break. Come back. Okay, I'm flattening the top of a white Arkansas with a green stone. You can use a diamond, you can use anything rough really. Just to, You can see how flat it is at the top because this will give it a sharp edge and with that I'll be able to cut slightly deeper and produce little half tone hairs a little bit more effective, uh, effectively. You will notice I've gone to the end of the tail and working backwards. Um, you should always do that really, but it's going to be more noticeable with this little tool because you tend to start with a blob. I've mentioned that before. You start with a blob no matter how lightly you, you put your um, white or Kansas down. So if you're working backwards, in other words, you start off with one layer and then go behind it and flick into it and then behind that and then flick, flick into that, you're going to be cutting into the blob so you're not going to see the little blobs that you start off with if you know what I mean <laughs> sounds like a bunch of gobbledygook actually but you you know once you get into it you'll you'll see what I mean right a uh, larger rubber I've got a soft gray one here um, as I say virtually any rubber will do not too hard though um, and just blending and softening areas again. A rubber that is slightly softer will go into the engraving a little bit more. It's not going to just hop along the upper surface. And that's why I like this particular rubber. Okay, so I've darkened those areas and now I'm just flicking in with the white Arkansas. Flicking up and down. Oh, I say. That's quite dramatic. Fun though, isn't it? I thought this bit of music sounded a little bit cat-like. The previous piece was actually called The Black Cat. And uh, what is this one called? Hold on. Happy Haunts. Right, as you can see, I am using the grey rubber with my fingers. And this is quite possible because it happens to be quite soft. 
and um, it produces just an even more gentler effect. Of course, I meant to say even more gentle effect, not gentler. <laughs> and we are about to turn the glass around, if I can remember. Boom, there we go, like magic, the glass is turned around and we're back in with the diamond putting the brighter little hairs over the darker ones that we've already produced. So there's a lot of depth going on. So I'm referring quite a lot to my little picture that I have chosen to copy. It's um, just a copyright free photograph off the internet and um, really there are billions of pictures that you can copy and uh, adapt. I mean the, the colours that I'm putting in, the, the layers of shading are quite different to the one in the main picture. I'm not obviously not st sticking to it <laughs> religiously because I don't have to but um, what you need to do is make sure you know where or you can see where the whiskers for example are coming out from and if you're not sure and you you've got a little picture to refer to that's very helpful and the hairs in the ears as well you know things like that are quite important now um, this is slightly sped up I have um, put it to 120 percent more than normal speed um, so but still when you do whiskers do make sure you don't take too long over each one because otherwise it'll start to wobble it sounds like the plot is thickening according to the music because it is I have a little surprise in store for our little feline. How many times have you wondered whether you could change something because you are not happy with it? Or even if you're not happy, you just want to change it. If you have messed up some lettering, for example, that can be pretty impossible to change because it really needs to be accurate in the first place and you don't want to be uh, polishing out in the middle of the glass. But if it's in the middle of an engraved area and you've got depth to play with, the thickness of glass to play with, um, then just about anything is possible. So what is about to happen, I wonder? I've signed the glass and dated it, as always. Let's see what happens next. time for a facelift. Here I have got a green stone which I am rather rapidly, no I'm not, this is sped up to 141% of normal speed and I am slowly working back the area and playing with it just to sort of level it out, darken it I certainly don't want to put it back to clear glass. I don't need to. Um, we've got plenty of depth to go with and I'm just mainly roughing out a darker area. It will have hairy texture. That is perfectly all right. But it's to smooth it out a little bit in level wise. So um, I'm trying to 
get back to level the areas that were deeper if you know what i mean um and because we're only talking on something very shallow i haven't gone very very deep so i've got plenty to play with and uh, i discovered that looking at a domestic cat and uh, versus a wild uh, large cat this cat's nose and little um at the top of its mouth were too low and they needed to come up quite considerably so that is what i'm doing um <laughs> I know it's quite extreme, but throw caution to the wind and you can do it. So because it's involving quite a lot, I actually have, as I say, speeded it up quite a lot. I used a green stone and um, rubber and I used a grey rubber and a black rubber. Just play with the rubbers and the stones until you sort of roughly smoothish an area. Then um, put started putting the details in. Here I have a white dark Kansas, and I am just darkening some, um, smoothing out some of the areas like the yeah you know, there we are the little nose, the little mouth area. Already it's starting to look a little bit more domestic than it was before, and. Um, uh, as you see, that's quite dark where the the little holes for the whiskers come out of. Um, but I'm just preparing that darkness. I will uh, work now with diamond to brighten the area. Uh, now I will probably take a rat's tail to um, define the tiny little black dots that you see. There's my little rat's tail. A very very fine one very fine one um just outline the nose and i am just filling in the details gosh my screen is so small i'm barely able to see it hold on a second i can't but i can't i can't begin to tell you how many um panels there are in this um, Adobe Premiere Pro 2020 um, uh, editing program. It is like a jungle. <laughs> There's just so much to look at. And, and these screens, um, depending on whether you're working with uh, uh, assembling, editing, color effects, audio, graphics, the libraries, you know, you name it. There's so many different panels uh, and it just keeps me um <laughs> keeps me occupied trying to work it all out anyway hopefully i'll get the hang of it i've enlarged the picture a little bit more so that i can see what's going on here again working back and forth back and forth i've obviously decided i wanted to smooth that area more so i have got the green stone again and now the uh, gray stone again um as i say we are definitely painting with diamonds today, that is for sure. Okay, diamond stones and rubbers, but it's, it's, um, <laughs> this is our palette. Now with the white Arkansas and just roughing in some movement of hair texture. I'm just playing and playing and playing. You can see it's already looking much better. It's not as frightening as you would imagine. It really is not. I just was not happy with the way the cat was looking. It was looking way too um, wild for me and large. I really wanted a domestic cat. And I, I think I'll, I'll end up doing another one at some point. Maybe a different, maybe a Siamese or something like that. So oh, Siamese is on, oh yeah, Siamese on a on a champagne flute or something. So tall and elegant. Right, more details on the nose. Hope this kitty does not mind the new facelift.
So this is a good demonstration of how to correct something that you're not happy with. I've always been asked just exactly that. Just do it. Obviously, if the glass is too thin, and um, you know, sometimes it's just not worth it. But it's pretty easy to do in this, in this case. White off Kansas to half tone under the eyes there. See, I really should have put the picture of the cat behind the glass. That is the easiest way to, to trace the main details. I would have got everything in the right place <laughs> to begin with if I'd done that. But it doesn't matter. If it was a portrait of someone's cat, that is a different story. Then I would definitely trace every little detail then you really need to get the shading right. Um, that's really important. Everything is important when it's a portrait of an animal. You can see in this picture that the cameraman has got down to the level of the animal. That is important as well. When you are doing a portrait of, of someone's um, cat or dog or whatever, you need to be down at the same level as the cat, if possible, and not do, certainly avoid the foreshortened pictures that, that my many customers send um, that look ever so cute in the photograph, but are a nightmare <laughs> on glass. Certainly I think so, I'm probably old fashioned, but I, I really want um, a cat or a dog portrait or a horse or whatever to look a little bit more official. Unless it's an action photo, action, actions are different. Then you can get really arty with it. How's our kitty doing? Much, much better. I, I've got to tell you, honestly, I moved his whole um, bottom half of his, his face up probably about three mil, which is quite a lot in his little face. And it, it did make quite a difference. So still finishing off with the diamond, tiny little adjustments here and there. Clean it with a nice soft cloth and a normal kitchen uh, towel is fine. So you can hardly actually even notice um, that I've done anything different. It looks like the original engraving. No problem at all. Wow. That was hard work. Only, only because 
um, I didn't really stop <laughs> for a long time. So um, yeah, I was like a little mini marathon. Have fun and uh, until next time, cheerio.